Here is the long-awaited day of departure, which, until the last, we did not believe would arrive. We arrive at the airport, ready for our first flight with Ethiopian, direction Antananarivo, passing through Addis Ababa. After the security check, we look for the Ethiopian lounge that we've never tried before. We did not have great expectations, the place is not clean, the buffet space is very narrow, two people do not pass by, and the staff is rude. Although the closure is still an hour away, the staff is already taking away food and drink. Fortunately, the time is running pretty fast, and we head towards the embarkation. Shortly after takeoff, we decided to sleep for a while, and then we woke up with the magnificent colors of the dawn. We asked to have for breakfast the menu planned for the previous dinner, and they brought us a dish made of salmon and one of tilapia. During the stopover in Addis Ababa, we decide to make a short stop in the lounge, and there we discover that the gate for business class passengers is different from the one shown on the screen. The flight leaves with an hour's delay. We sit down and watch a movie as soon as possible. Meals are different, we choose, a vegetable roll with corn chips and salad, typical Ethiopian dish, a kind of teff piadina with lentils, chicken, spinach, and other vegetables, lamb and fish. The entertainment on board is very slow and not always working. We land and face passport control, it was not as long as the one experienced in India, but still, it is not at all well organized. Visa control is done at random, the queues are not respected as some passengers are let through before others after paying staff at the airport. At the exit, our driver is waiting for us, and two other employees accompany us to the car carrying our suitcases, then brazenly ask for a reward of 20 euros for both. We finally arrive at the hotel and relax. Early in the evening, we go down to the restaurant for dinner. The air conditioning is on, and the environment is more than cool. We take zebu meat accompanied by vegetables seasoned with lots of garlic. For dessert a fruit salad that here they call, seasonal fruit minestrone, with a scoop of vanilla ice cream, and to finish a chai latte that did not have a great taste. We go back to the room and finally we sleep almost 12 hours. We'll need the energy for the next few days. We wake up after a regenerating sleep and go for breakfast. The choice of buffet is not very varied, but we can still find something to eat. We will have lunch anyway before the domestic flight to Majunga. We take the opportunity to stay a little in the sun and take a walk in the hotel's parking lots, we do not dare to go out because the area does not inspire confidence. In the room, we decide to do some bodyweight exercises to get active and recharge ourselves a little. We have lunch and then we wait for the arrival time of the driver who will accompany us to the airport. We ask the reception to change euros into local currency, they call an external person who takes care of that. This person, gives us a bunch of banknotes to count and gives us no receipts or anything else, we are a bit perplexed but we don't ask big questions and we accept what just happened. We head towards the airport, pass the controls and wait in the lounge. We had to check in a hand luggage, hoping to see it again upon our arrival in Majunga. Directly from the lounge they take us out on the runway and get us boarded in the last seats of the plane, the business class is almost identical to that of intra-European flights. The flight leaves early, shortly after the takeoff they bring us a sandwich with cheese and a biscuit, nothing special but we were not hungry anyway. We land after a calm one-hour flight with a spectacle of colors given by the sunset. We wait for the luggage that fortunately arrives. Our guide Fidel welcomes us with the driver and accompanies us to the car. We head towards the hotel, but shortly after they announce that we have to go back to the airport to pick up another person forgotten by the driver. We smile amused and go back. We finally arrive at the hotel, they welcome us with a smile and a welcome cocktail, we go to the room, take a shower and go eat. The service at the restaurant is disorganized, they forget to bring us the appetizer and then, once the mistake is corrected, they clear the table without bringing us the main dishes. Anyway, we somehow managed to eat everything we ordered. Time to go back to the room to rest. The alarm rings at 4.45 am, reminds us of our working days but this time is for a different experience. 
We have breakfast and we leave at 6 a.m. The trip to the waterfall takes about four hours. The first part of the road, about an hour, is paved, some traffic, but nothing crazy. Several ape cars and buses full of people occupy the streets along with merchants with fish and meat on the ground. We arrive at the entrance of the savanna and there the situation changes radically. The road is full of holes and the speed is significantly reduced. There are no large animals here, we see some chameleons and various species of birds, including a small hawk. We stop approximately halfway, on the banks of a small river. We continue until we reach our destination, a beautiful waterfall is waiting for us. Initially a little intimidated by the idea of cold water, but then when we dive in, the thoughts vanish and there is only the desire to fully enjoy the moment, without anyone else around. The feeling of freedom that gives us this waterfall is indescribable, used to living in the city, this is a moment of unique tranquility. After the bath, we go for lunch, salad, rice with crab and chicken and to finish the fruit, then continue the journey to visit the caves about 20 minutes from there. During the journey, we quickly stop in a small village where there is a guy who is first paid by the driver and then got up behind the pickup. We find out it's a local guide. We enter the cave and the guide, wearing only flip-flops, shows us and explains the stalagmites present inside the cavern. We notice almost immediately how the light changes, until we see the most absolute darkness when we turn off the torches. We see two species of bats, there are so many. There are stalagmites of all shapes and sizes. Those that descend from above join with those that rise from below, creating numerous columns. After about an hour of visit, we return to the pickup. We take the guide back for a stretch of road and head towards the exit of the savanna. The idea is to be able to get back before sunset with natural light. We manage to get to the hotel before dark. After a warm enough shower, we prepare for dinner. Tired, we head to the room to rest as much as possible. Our first day is already over and we are ready for the next adventure. The alarm rings inexorably at 6.45, we prepare for breakfast and at 8 a.m. depart towards a national park. We stop in a small village on the way, to taste the cashew nuts harvested and roasted on site. We feel a mix of emotions. Serenity dictated by the curiosity of the inhabitants in seeing us. Sadness in seeing the poverty of the village. Fear caused by trucks traveling at high speed a few meters from us. We continue until we reach the park, where we stop to eat before we begin the visit. As we wait, we see a group of Sifaka lemurs on a tree near us. We start the tour with the park guide who explains the local flora and fauna. The tour lasts about three and a half hours, during which we see three different species of lemurs, some spiders, a chameleon, a snake and an owl. We continue on a sunnier path without trees, characterized by red sand, until we reach the canyon where we can admire the splendid view. It was hard, but it was worth it. We return along the same route and head towards the lake, where we go with the boat in search of crocodiles. No trace of them, but we witness the release of a zebu who was stuck in the mud. Last trip by car for today to the accommodation. We pass by a village, where many children greet us looking at us curiously. We arrive at destination, we will sleep in a typical local cottage, electricity is available from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. and of course there is no Wi-Fi. We eat at 6.30 p.m., after a quick refreshment with little water available. For dinner we have crispy vegetables with eggs and a sort of tasteless carrot soup, zebu stew, mixed vegetables and fried potatoes. For dessert, pineapple. We go back to the room, pack our bags and get ready to sleep. We wake up for breakfast that is served at 6 a.m. They bring us tea, bread, butter and jam and typical local rice cakes. We resume the journey and go pick up the guide who slept in a nearby hotel. The distances traveled are not extreme, but the travel time is very high due to the state of the roads. We then make a short stop and taste the jujubes directly from the tree. Halfway, 
we stop for lunch. Chicken, rice and vegetables is our meal for today. The road is increasingly bumpy, there are numerous ongoing work and deviations. Exhausted, we arrive in the late afternoon at the hotel, time to take a shower and prepare for dinner. We order a Ravi Toto, typical dish based on tapioca leaves and a second of meat. Shortly thereafter, all lights are turned off due to a blackout. This happens frequently throughout the island. We get back to room very tired, and even though the hotel is probably the worst we visited so far, we need to sleep to recover from today's trip. Breakfast should be served from 6.30 am, but only 10 minutes later we can order tea and coffee and omelets. Drinks arrive accompanied by butter and jam. After a while, five long pieces of bread and some cakes arrive. A very sweet grapefruit drink and a fruit plate. Finally, the omelette arrives. Time to finish packing and we leave for the park of lemurs, to arrive in the evening in Mbanja. Halfway we stop in a small accommodation where we meet the guide who together with his daughter accompanies us along a winding path that leads to a waterfall. During the walk we have the pleasure of meeting four beautiful lemurs, three females and a male, with blue eyes. We are surprised to see them approaching us without fear, surely the bananas facilitated this moment. Reluctantly we had to say goodbye to them to continue our journey, crossing the river that leads us to another isolated waterfall. After a refreshing bath, we return to the village where we eat. After lunch, the last three hours of travel to Mbanja, the capital of Koko, await us. We arrive at the lodge, it is undoubtedly the best one encountered during the trip, the most intimate and characteristic. Before dinner, they ask us when we want to eat and what. After dinner we go back to the room and write the diary. We hear the sound of rain here for the first time. This is a special moment because we can relax and realize what we have experienced up to that point. At 6.45 am, at the sound of the alarm clock, we get up with the impression of having slept well and having regained energy. Let's go have breakfast. The temperature is fabulous, the air is fresh but not too much. They bring us bread and croissants with condensed milk, hazelnut cream, butter and jam coffee and tea, and to finish. A fresh papaya juice. We conclude our adventure trip, we visit a garden where they harvest vanilla, cocoa, pepper, bananas, pineapples, and coffee. After lunch, we head to the harbor to take the boat that will take us to Nosy B. The journey from the port of Anfiki is very bumpy and the boat slams violently on the waves, however, we arrive all in one piece at our destination. We waited so long to finally be able to live this adventure. Every time, before a new trip, we are excited but convinced that we are ready to face any challenge. Madagascar is a very special island, there are arid and desert areas, as well as breathtaking waterfalls. An incredible biodiversity that can be observed in few other places. If our last safari in India required a bit of adaptability, this trip required much more. Hygiene is often a problem, it is not a matter of being picky, but especially for the food, we often found ourselves confronted with even dangerous situations. Raw fish or meat left in the sun for several hours and food on the ground on the road, are just two examples. While this may seem like a small problem, it is good to remember that hospitals are not always nearby and getting from a village to a town can take many hours due to the state of the roads. Unlike the last trip, however, we would not change our itinerary, everything went as we hoped. We experienced strong emotions, met lemurs in their environment and met wonderful people. We would like to thank Sounds Madagascar once again for making this dream a reality, you can find their references in the description below. We hope you enjoyed our review, please leave a like, and subscribe to our channel. In addition, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook for real-time updates on our experiences.